everybody, this is Brad from Pro Wrestling Junkies, and today we have a guest who hails from one of the top 50 states, including uh, Alaska and Hawaii, you could throw Puerto Rico in there as well, top 50 states in the whole United States, Illinois, Springfield, the state capital specifically. Mm -hmm. This man is trained at Burning Spirit Wrestling Academy under Michael Elgin, and his first match in 2016, he's wrestled for AAW, Evolve, IWA Mid-South, Impact. He was on their All Glory show. He had a match as well as two matches on Explosion, one against Trey Miguel and then in a tag team match against Buck Runderson and Mr. Marvelous. He's the current 01 USA World Junior Heavyweight Champion as well as a 01 USA World Tag Team Champion with Gnarls Garvin. He stood and shared the ring with Dan Housen, Ethan Page, Brian Pillman Jr., Marco Stunt, Eddie Kingston, Trey Lamar, to name a few. So standing at five foot three, weighing in around 160 pounds, I welcome Jake Lander. Hey Jake, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going well. good. I mean, that was an amazing rundown. I need, oh, thank you. I need you uh, around me all the time. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I need you my all wife the time. doesn't want me I around. All that stuff and, you could definitely well, have hey. me. Um, well, so you did you, uh, did you tore up your knee in the spring? Yeah, uh, so, Actually, back in January, uh, I had a pretty bad accident where I dove over the top rope and my legs hit the guardrail, my head hit the ground and knocked myself completely unconscious. Uh, it was out for about 30 seconds uh, once I watched the video. I didn't even know I knocked myself out until I wow. seen a video a fan actually sent me. And then I was like, well, I don't remember laying there for 30 seconds. But Jeez. then I got up and I finished the match and uh, I kind of, I, I definitely didn't feel normal. You, you don't mm. feel normal after that. but. You know, the wrestler's mentality is unless, uh, you know, you're dead in the middle of the ring, I'm going to finish the match. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of instilled in all of us. And we're all a little, you know, crazy if we're in this sport to begin with. For but sure. I, I got up, I finished the match. And then after the match is when I really, once the adrenaline wore off is when I really felt everything go go south. Oh, God. And uh, I ended up, ended up going into the hospital the next day. Uh, it was actually the Sunday uh, this, it was actually the Saturday before the Royal Rumble because I remember not going to the hospital uh, Sunday morning because I wanted to watch the Royal Rumble. <laughs> so after that was over is when I went uh, into the hospital and uh, I had nerve damage in my leg. I have short-term memory loss. So it was a very bad accident. Um, oh but God. because of all of the, the neurological stuff that they were so focused on, which, you know, when I went in, I had brain swelling and, and things like that. Uh, they kind of overlooked uh, the, the knee uh, in about two weeks uh, to a month later, somewhere around there, uh, still feeling the effects of the knee, still hurting. I went and got it that checked out and they did an uh -huh. MRI and that's when they told me that I uh, tore the ACL, so. Oh my God. Is, is the recovery, I remember like, I think it was 1987 or 88, Danny Manning was like the number one pick in basketball and right away in his rookie, he tore up his knee and that destroyed his career because like what what they did with an ACL back then as opposed to what they do now is like night and day do, is um, how is the rehab for it uh, I mean exactly what you just said is exactly true because from then to now uh, five years ago actually I had surgery on the same day uh, five years ago on my left knee I oh, tore wow. my ACL yeah so and even just in that five years surgery is completely different uh, mm -hmm. and rehab is completely different um, it took me almost twice as long with my left knee that it's taken me with my right knee, oh, wow. you know, to, to get places, you know, I'm, I'm moving along so much faster with my right knee. And that's just because of the way surgery is now and the way mm -hmm. rehab is now. So just in five years, uh, it, you know, it took it from a nine month uh, to a year yeah. being out with my left knee to their saying, you know, only six out of months. Oh, wow. Know. It's yeah, that's I mean that's a so, huge and, and difference. Move so recovery now is I mean it's two big old scars, uh, you know, from the surgery. When I got out of surgery with my right knee, I kinda looked at him. I was kind of expecting the same big old ugly scars, you know, I yeah. gotta think of something cool to tell the you know, tell people. And they're just they're they're tiny. They're just little, they're you can barely see them, they're not noticeable, and it's just like, you know, the medical you know, field is, is always evolving like that. And it's allowing athletes like us who just, who are hungry and want to get right back into the game and take no time off yeah. to be able to get back as quick as we can. And, and I'm super grateful for, you know, all the knowledge learned in the five years. Yeah, oh my God. How, how are the neurological things? 
Uh, like, did you have a so, concussion? Oh yeah, yeah. I had a okay. pretty bad concussion. Uh, uh, one of the concussion tests. I'll never forget this. Uh, it, it was it was it was the most outer body experience I've ever experienced while being able to tell myself you're not doing something right, and I and I couldn't stop it uh, just because of the head. Uh, they gave me a, t a sheet and it had a circle on it, just a, a round circle, and they told me to draw a clock. And when I drew the clock, uh, I knew what a clock looked like. I've seen you know clocks my entire life. I just couldn't draw a clock to save my life. Uh, and they were like, well, we need you to try something. And for some reason, I was envisioning it in my head, uh -huh. but I couldn't I couldn't draw it. Was that and scary? So like, yeah, oh yeah, that's that's when I really, you know, knew that something was wrong, uh, was at that moment. Um, and then that, uh, when I actually drew it, you know, you know the, the one, the six, you know, the nine, the three, I tried to do those as best as I can and then fill in the gaps. And I tried to, you know, have some, some get into it. I just yeah. couldn't for the life of me. I, I think I ended up the 12 right where the 10 would be. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and they, they looked at that and they're like, okay, you have something, you know, really wrong. And then with the nerve damage in the leg, uh, they said that could have been possibly from a mini stroke I had overnight because I went to sleep on the concussion. Oh my God. Uh, so while I was in the hospital for three and a half days, you know, I was being woken up every hour for, you know, to make sure things weren't slipping back in uh -huh. they were worried about it. So for those three and a half days in the hospital, you know, with that head injury, it was, it was a very scary time. So, okay. Two questions. One, did the, what did the doctor say about continuing wrestling? And two, what did your family, what was their opinion? Based uh, on so, like the... <laughs> I'll start with the doctors because okay. uh, the doctors, well, my, what the doctor said is a little more professional than yeah. what my mother said, <laughs> totally. you know, and, I, and I, I'll have to keep it PG from what my sure, mother said. Sure. She, was, she was not happy, but uh, <laughs> the doctor said, you know, th they had the same reaction. Five years ago when I tore my ACL and I told the doctor I wanted to go back, his reaction was, are you crazy? You know, now with the head injury, my first question was, it, it wasn't, you know, am I ever going to, you know, so my, you know, me again, is this going to be forever? My first question was, when can I wrestle again? <laughs> you know, and they just looked at me like, you're going to wrestle again after this? And I said, yeah, this is what I love to do. This is what I, you know, feel like I was born to do. You know, everybody has <laughs> that, that feeling. And this is one of the one things I'm really good at. So that was my first question. And they basically told me that if you are going to wrestle again, you need to take a good quality of time off. Okay. And, and, and rest, rest your mind, rest your head, make sure you don't you know, fall, make sure you're no impacts because it's on the same scale as, uh, what took, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan out mm -hmm. that concussion level. Wow. Uh, so knowing, knowing that those type of concussions are on the scale of taking something away, such yeah. as they did with Daniel Bryan as wrestling would be for me, uh, you know, normally I like to bend the rules a little bit, you know, they, they tell me to walk, I kind of jog, you know, <laughs> you know, they tell me, they tell me to lift five pounds, I like to lift 10 pounds. But with this one, I really was, all right, what do I need to do? How long do I need to lay in bed? You know, give me exact things and I'll do them. Cause I yeah. knew that if I mess around with this, if I don't follow the right directions, I'm done. Uh -huh. okay, so that's, that's, they told me, they, they basically were like, all right, if you're going back, this is what you need to do to go back. We don't suggest it, but. You know. Have you been back in a ring? And then, uh, yeah, actually, it was about, and I had one more show right before the whole COVID pandemic went on where everything just got uh, taken down. It was the Glory Pro show. Uh, I can't think of the name right now. Um, I think it was the anniversary show, actually. Okay. I think it was. That was the last one. Um, and going into that, I would say that I was feeling very good. I was, you know, I would say I was feeling 100%. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't know what my brain was. Yeah. Um, but even in that, you know, I just, the months being taken off felt like a year, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I was just like, it's in to get back. And even then, you know, I took baby steps, you know? So it, were you, it wasn't a, were you hesitant to take a bump? Like for the first uh, time? Yeah, I was very hesitant. In that match, wasn't the first time that I took a bump. Yeah. I, I, since there was that month, I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, able to perform safely. So I mm -hmm. did get in the ring and, and kind of run the ropes and bump around and roll around and things like that. And uh, but yeah, taking that that first initial bump after being told that if you don't wait, you know, this could end your career. Yeah, uh, it was a, a wave of emotions and thoughts of, is this long enough? Is, is, should I go ask them, you know, am I making the right choices? So yeah. Did you play it, football? It's, it's kind of one of those things. Did you ever play uh, no, organized I, football? 
I did not play football. Uh, okay. Football was one of the sports that I just never played. Uh, mm -hmm. I played about everything else except yeah. football. Well, yeah, because like that is like I, sometimes like pe like I'll ask people, would you let your kids play, you know, organized football, n n knowing now what they know about concussions and life after? And everyone's like, no, I uh, leave it up to them. I'm like, all right, all right, let's go back a little bit. So, growing up, were you, were you, um, you know, I, I hear a lot of the, when I talk to wrestlers, like I was picked on, you know, gr bullied growing up. I was small. I looked like this. Did you have any of that when you were uh, growing up? Uh, yeah, there was uh, some bullying in, in school, uh, middle school to high school times, uh, just because, you know, I am only five for three, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I was actually just looking uh, through some old uh, athletic stuff. And at six years old, I, I had this little playing card made for my, my baseball team. Yeah. And, and at six years old, it had my height stat and my height stat was only three foot five inches. Oh, wow. So, you know, I've been short my entire life. Yeah, yeah. You know, thing was, was the height, you know, and you know, it, it just, what it, it, it was what it was. I didn't let it affect me too much. You know, uh -huh. I wasn't one of those, you know, type of kids that get bullied and lash out. It was kind of just like at a young age, I kind of realized that there's always going to be those people in the world. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be those people that have a harder life than you and they try to feel better and please themselves yeah yeah by ripping other people down and i seen those people i just i let them roll off my back you know yeah so wh when did you when did wrestling come on your radar uh honestly i, I can't tell you the exact time mm -hmm. but it has been something i wanted to do for a long time uh Everything has kind of involved with wrestling with me. Uh -huh. uh, after after high school, when I kind of realized, because I always wanted to play baseball. Baseball was my, my main sport. Oh, okay. I always wanted to, to grow up and be a baseball player. You mm -hmm. know, that was kind of my main course. And then after I kind of realized that, you know, that's not going to work out, that's not actually happening, that's when I really started to dive into wrestling schools and how can I become a wrestler. And uh, the funny thing is, I loved wrestling so much, but at that time, I didn't really know much about like the independent scene, that there was an actual scene. Oh, okay. Uh, I was more of a Raw or SmackDown person. Uh -huh. So I was looking up, I was Googling, you know, how do I get into WWE? <laughs> you know, like I didn't realize that, you know, there were all of these other type of wrestling that I could get into that way. Mm -hmm. so I was just looking, I was just wanting to go straight to the top. Yeah, so yeah totally. It, it wasn't until I actually went to uh, a friend of mine wanted to go to a wrestling show that I have in my hometown and I knew nothing about it but it's wrestling of course I'm gonna go and the first night I went they released uh their school that they were having and I was like this is it this oh, wow. is I was. and and so I called them immediately and it cost me 300 bucks so I'm you know you can tell it wasn't the best you know <laughs> right away you know a good fundamentals but other than that you know but I mean, hey it got me in the door you know so it got is, me in a wrestling ring and is the 300 dollars a one-time payment yeah, it was a oh, okay. one-time payment. And that's uh, where you, you know. met you met uh, Michael Elgin? No, that was actually, um, Elgin was my first, okay. or, I'm sorry, Elgin was my second uh, kind of school I went to. Okay. The first one was here local. It was a, it was a smaller, you know, ring. It was a smaller mm -hmm. thing. You know, the crowds at this at this event, uh, they've gotten a lot bigger recently, but at the time they were, you know, 60 to 100 people. And uh -huh. it was just kind of a small thing. But the way I seen it was, you know, this is my way in. So yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna get it now, and then. So would you say, like, what was your first day of training? Had you ever been in a wrestling ring or anything like oh, that? No. So how I was? Were you nervous? Was, oh yeah, I was. I was equally nervous as I was excited. I think. Uh huh. Uh, because I, growing up, you all you see this ring, and it's a, it's a stage. You know. Uh huh. It's a it's a sight to behold when you're a fan. You know. Yeah. You, you, it, it's like, is it? You always hear, is it, is it padded? Is it not? Is it, you know, all the, so yeah. there was so much just looking at a ring and being able to physically touch a ring uh -huh. that was overwhelming for me, <laughs> let alone, you know, when I threw my Nikes on and, you know, I had knee pads and everything uh -huh. like that. I had elbow pads and, you know, I, I think I showed up the first couple of days uh, until I realized no one else did. I had a mouth <laughs> guard. And so, you know, when they finally said, get on in there, I was like, all right, I've been training for this my whole life, so, you know, and, 
try to get in all cool and throw my leg <laughs> over the middle of the rope and you know it, it was it was great were I'll you never in forget pain? that first day were you in um, pain uh, yes. after it? yeah when i always tell people because i do in that same training school uh they still have it today and a lot of times they like me to come in you know because i'm i'm well traveled now and things like mm -hmm. that uh, and if there's any other newcomers, I lay it to them straight, you know, and I tell them and, and without a single hint of a lie here, the next morning I woke up, I would take my first bumps. I couldn't move. Oh God. It, it, it's, it's not a lie. You know, I, my, from head to toe, everything hurt, you know, cause when, you, when you're learning, I, I caught on a bumps relatively quicker, Okay. but there was still a week where I was hitting my elbows and, and hitting top part of my back, lower part, spine, but you know, I wasn't throwing my legs out. So yeah. everything hurts your first couple of weeks. If you can get through that first <laughs> couple of weeks and you really want it, cause it's going to, you're going to really, really need to want wrestling. Yeah. Those first couple of weeks. Uh, if you get through that, then, then you'll make it. You Did really you, want it. were you training on your own or were there any other like new to wrestling uh, people to train? Oh yeah, uh, there was, I think when I started, there was nine, 18 or 19 people that showed up for this training class. Okay. And out of all of them, I believe only four of us remain. Oh wow. Uh, and then and then some stragglers kind of came in and made the class a little bigger, but uh, but yeah, there was definitely some newbies that were there and, and uh, some of them still wrestle today and some of them I still have, you know, my closest friends, one oh, of my wow. closest friends, you know, I was in his wedding, you know, I, I, I died for the guy, I met him there, you know. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have to ask you a question. Do you care about if you win or you lose a match or do you care more putting on the, the good performance? I, I personally uh, don't necessarily care about the win or loss mm -hmm. uh and unless it plays into unless i feel like it's not the best storyline mm -hmm. uh for the show for the for the fans and okay. i'll, I'll kind of say something mm -hmm. i'll kind of just you know because it, it's the bookers you know it's yeah. their thing it's their it's their vision but i feel like any good booker and as a booker you're also a businessman and any good businessman should want to be open to different ideas and mm -hmm. different paths you know so i've never been really shy to you know, just express my thoughts, you know, and if they get shut down, they get shut down. If they get picked up on and it's better, it's better. Yeah. If you tell me to, you know, go away and go wrestle, I'll go away and go wrestle, <laughs> you know, but just the fact of winning or losing to me doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. More, more of a, what kind of show I can put on, who my opponent is, what kind of story are we telling, you know, that kind of thing. So, but winning a belt, that's a big deal. Oh, you know, absolutely. Too. You know, so, I, do you ever, I, do you have two belts or tag team belt and the, Junior Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, I have the two belts ever, actually upstairs. Do you ever like walk around like in the house with like your belts oh, on? Absolutely. Or, oh absolutely. my, I'd always have them on me if I was. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that, that, that's a real thing. You know, belts. You know, a lot of people have different mixed emotions about belts, and mm -hmm. you know, some people, some people like me really enjoy them, uh, and other people just you know think they weigh down their gear bag, which they do. Yeah. Like, you know, but which which they do, and they, they do cost a little more money going through the airport type of thing. But you know, when you have a belt it means more than just being the quote unquote champion of that company. Mm -hmm. It means that that company trusts you. That means that you're good enough at the time with all of the other people to put on the best story for the fan, for the fans, for the company to make the most money. You know, it has a lot of different meanings for us as wrestlers uh -huh. than just as a fan see as the heavyweight champion. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And I respect those decisions that are made at the time when, you know, somebody puts a belt on me and I really take them seriously to make sure that if I don't have the best match of the night, mm -hmm. I'm helping other people's matches, you know, I'll put yeah. my match together. You know, it, it might be a main event, main event match, but I won't start putting my match together until you know, a little after intermission, just because I'm trying to help, you know, other people put their stuff yeah. together and, and make sure that, you know, things are going, you know, the like the whole show is great. Be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Not I, I don't just want any show I'm on. It doesn't matter yeah. if I'm close with the booker or not, or they just book me. Any show I'm on, I don't want it to be, you know, a show with eight different matches. I want it to be an entire performance. You yeah, know, yeah. Show, you know, from match one to the main event is telling a elongated story while all these little stories are happening in place. By the end, I want people to leave going, that was the best show yeah, I've yeah. ever seen. Not like, I like the second match. No, it was yeah, like, you know, that was a great show we just went and took. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that every single match has a little something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll, it'll 
opposed to all the different fans and you know because fans are so diverse on what they like you know whether it's old school the high spot stuff the storytelling <laughs> the strikes you know this you know strong style whatever it is you know i want to be on a show where it has a little something for everybody all right i have to ask you a question my my wife is a dancer not a stripper <laughs> a dancer and you know, she per she's performed all her life, and you know, then I met her and I started watching her perform. I'm like, it must feel awesome to have people applaud you. Do, do, do you like feel good when like the audience, even if it's 10 people, like I always say to her, I've never had one person like applaud me. Is it a good feeling? Uh, yeah, I would say it is, it is one of the best feelings, uh, you know, that, that one could receive. It's a, it's a token of gratitude for you know, you're, you're putting on a performance, no matter what you're doing, whether you're yeah. a wrestler, a dancer, baseball player, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it to please someone and they give you that that gratification, that's what you were wanting. So even if it is just a, a crowd of 10 or it's a crowd of 10,000 and uh -huh. you, you know, it's it's the same kind of feeling all around. You know, if, if I'm going out there to wrestle for 10 people, I want 10 people to be happy. I'm going out there to wrestle for 10,000. I want 10,000 people to be happy. Yeah. You know? uh, all right. So I have one last question for you. Wrestling question. Do you still watch yeah. watch right. wrestling like for, you know, like for your free time? Oh, absolutely. I got SmackDown on right now. Oh, okay, cool. Do you have the yeah. WWE Network? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> everyone yep, does. The network, you know. And that's uh, the thing. Uh, you hear a lot of people, you know, a lot of wrestlers will say that, you know, they don't watch wrestling anymore. Yeah. And, to me, you know, it doesn't matter if if what's on SmackDown is, is or Raw is is good right now. Uh -huh. It's still wrestling. It's, it's still entertaining. On TV. They have a bunch of pyro and screens, and just watch it. You know, yeah, just, just exactly. Watch it, you know, it makes billions of dollars for a reason. Just yeah, watch it. exactly. All right, I'm gonna let you go in a minute. I have five random questions for you. Yeah, sure. Not wrestling related, but just yes or no. Uh, okay, so the okay. first one is, have you ever been bitten by a wild animal? Uh, yes. What was it? Uh, well, it's hard to say. What, it, it's not a wild animal. It was a straight, like a, a loose dog. That's, that counts. That's, a, that's the first thing in my mind. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, it was definitely a wild animal. It, it came running up, and uh, I thought it was going to be nice, and it just wasn't, and it <laughs> tore right into my ankle. So, one of my... Ever... Oh, there's a scar down there? Yeah, yeah, you know, so if you're ever around and you want to see it. Uh, <laughs> I remember crawling yeah, around your floor and I come up to your ankle. Like, yeah, hey, <laughs> uh, now that the world knows. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard the song Baby Monkey Going Backwards on a Pig? No. It's not a dirty song. Maybe I'm Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, baby, okay. I remember that. For, That's hard for to For $50,000. Would you let Patrick Mahomes throw a laser right at your like belly? Yes, okay. I would. Do you believe that people will be re reunited with their pets when they go to heaven? I sure hope so. Okay. If I you're, sure hope so. If you are good with kids, I'm not sure, but I am assuming you are. Would you mind babysitting mine for three straight weeks? Three straight weeks? Bring them over. Woo! All right. Bring them over. <laughs> Finally. Um, I, all right. I just watched a puppy for three days. Uh, I was I was dog sitting for three days. I mm -hmm. kept the puppy alive. So oh. I think I can handle kids for three weeks. I think it's That's, the same. I think it evens itself out. You barely have to feed them. You know, like a little, yeah. a, leave the sinks on with a drip of water and maybe something in the fridge. That's easy. Yeah. There's parenting stuff. I don't know why everybody gets so hard about it. So um, are you, are you uh, wrestling uh, anytime soon? Uh, not anytime soon. I actually just uh, had my, I think it was my 16 week or, or something appointment. Uh -huh. uh, and a couple days ago, I actually just, uh, I felt uh, an untoo familiar pain in my left knee. Oh no. Uh, I, I was just doing some running and uh, and my left knee is the, the good one. Uh -huh. My right knee is the one I just had surgery on. And since I was going in two days to get it checked out, I, uh, I kind of asked them if they could look at my knee for me, you know, make sure everything's yeah. okay. And, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with what an, the IT band is. Yeah, yeah. That, well, my IT band, because I didn't stretch, as what they explained to me, I didn't do enough stretching before I ran, uh -huh. uh, decided to run across my hip bone. It's a very painful 
thing when it happens, it tightens up and it takes a, a little while to, to loosen up and okay. things like that. So it, I don't think it pushed me coming back to wrestling anytime soon, mm -hmm. but it definitely hindered, you know, yeah. working out and things like are you that still to get back. So. Are you going to shows? Or just kind oh, of? Yeah. I, I actually just went to uh, one in Chicago. I think it was last weekend, Gally Lucha, just to kind of get back. Oh, nice into the swing of thing yeah get your face out there again see like yeah everyone. you know all right well i thank you so much i'd love to have you on again because i have like a ton of yeah, more questions to ask you um but stay well and be safe i hope your rehab continues and your arms are fine <laughs> you know just leave it to yeah, your legs I hope, for now. Uh, uh, yeah <laughs> it'll get uh, the better legs, the I did, I did not get blessed with good legs. I didn't get blessed with good legs for height. I didn't get blessed <laughs> with good legs for ACLs and now this band. But the arms, they're they're yeah, they're totally. Really you good. can feed hey, as long as you can feed yourself and give yourself like medication if you need it. You're good. All right, that's, Jake. Thank you well so well. much. This was great, and I will definitely uh, talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Take take care, man. Bye. Take care.